In Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom director James Wan immerses us once again into the vast, awe-inspiring ocean depths for a sequel that aims to outshine its predecessor in both spectacle and adventure. This time, your trusty cinema scouts Sum Guy and Pookie Angel are here to steer you through the currents of this cinematic voyage, making sure you're fully prepared for what unfolds beneath the waves. At the forefront once more is Jason Momoa, stepping back into the shoes of Arthur Curry, also known as Aquaman. Momoa, with his unmistakable charisma and physical stature, portrays the King of Atlantis with the same passion and heart that captivated audiences in the first installment. Alongside him, Patrick Wilson returns as Orm Arthur's estranged brother, and it's their dynamic, riddled with past tensions yet tied by blood, that becomes the emotional backbone of the story. Their journey not only spans the breathtaking landscapes of the underwater world, but also puts the strength of their strained relationship to the test. Yeah, we know there's this whole fatherhood story going on, but it's legit quite forgettable. Remove the kid and you get the same movie. So moving on. Juan's ambition to expand the mythology of Atlantis takes the spotlight. The film is a visual journey, with deeply intricate set designs that dazzle with bling. From glowing corridors of an Atlantean open market to the dark and cold of the film's big bad, Kordax, played by Pilu Asbeck, the underwater visuals are nothing short of magical, it stands as a tribute to the film's visual effects team who have surpassed themselves with extraordinary detail and creativity. However, the grandeur of its vision occasionally causes the narrative to drift into muddled territories. The plot, as thin as it is, sometimes struggles. This leads to a story that, while great to look at, introduces no significant evolution in its characters. Aquaman appears to be battling against its own tide, attempting to stretch an already thin plot simply to fill its two hours and four minute runtime. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is a mid-credit scene that is more for laughs than anything else. One subplot deserving more spotlight is Yahya Abdul-Mateen II's Black Manta. His vendetta against Aquaman brings a deeply personal conflict that contrasts with the broader world-threatening stakes. Abdul-Mateen's performance, overflowing with intensity and anger, makes Black Manta a formidable and intricate villain. Yet his storyline feels slightly neglected, and almost like an afterthought just to rush to the movie's anti-climatic climax. We understand the dilemma. Focusing too much on Manta could feel like a repetition of the first Aquaman movie. But that's essentially what we're presented with here. Just, well, prettier. The action scenes are thrilling and fun to watch. I mean, this is a superhero movie. Juan directs with an eye for both grandeur and intimacy, ensuring each battle feels both epic in scope and emotionally charged. Nevertheless, the film's ultimate battle, while visually striking, ends leaving you with a sense of letdown, especially when considering the tension buildup throughout the movie. In fact, we had a similar experience watching The Marvels, where the journey to get to the end boss proved more satisfying than the final battle itself. Aquaman, in The Lost Kingdom, excels in its quieter moments. The chemistry between Momoa and Wilson shines through in an almost buddy cop fashion. These instances offer a necessary balance to the action sequences, attempting to give us more reason to cheer these two forward with what's at stake. However, the film could have benefited from a more measured pacing, allowing audiences to dive deeper into its emotional and narrative dimensions and take advantage of the story there in front of us. Yes, the film presents a mix of interesting enough character dynamics and a storyline that requires effort to engage with, but let's be real, it looks amazing on screen, and that kept us in our seats. We're giving Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom 3 out of 5 stars simply for running on the sheer power of Momoa's wit and his chemistry with Wilson, mixed with a heavy dose of eye candy to keep everything afloat. Forget the story, there just isn't much there, but wow does it look good on screen. As we surface from the depths of this review, we'll close with the thought that Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom might not navigate its narrative seas flawlessly, but it's a voyage that dazzles and delights. Unfortunately, this was the last movie in the DC Extended Universe, so we don't know what's next for Arthur Curry, if anything at all. So there you go. If you're looking for sweet visuals, a few laughs and a dad joke or two, then grab your popcorn and beverage of choice and plunge into Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. It's fun, even if it's a little flat. That's all for now, movie lovers. Until next time. We are this close to unlocking the greatest power in human history. Are you really telling me you want to walk away now?